What's good, everybody? This is Ron Johnson with Money. All right, just bear with me, guys. Am I late? Am I late? Am I on time? Oh, my goodness. Ah, I am back once again. Another Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, guys. As always, we meet up here, you know, talk a little fish and a little this and that. And as you guys have seen lately, we have been going over some hot topics. Whew. But, you know, let's kind of ease into something a little different. Let's go, you know, let's go a little old school on them. Old school meaning, you know, what I originally talked about on the channel. If you guys could hit a one in the chat, just want to make sure that you can hear me okay and see me okay as we get things rolling. And also, while you guys are doing that, let me check over here on the Facebook crew real quick because, you know, we do stream live on YouTube and Facebook at the moment. And I see they are up and running over here on the Facebook side of things. All right. I see a few ones coming in. So just bear with me, guys. Let me check on my Facebook crew over here. All right. Let me refresh you guys. All right. There we go. Big shout out to the Facebook crew. All right, guys. So. You have seen the thumbnail for today and you have seen the title of tonight's live stream. We are going to ease into some electronics for tonight. So we're going to talk about Mega Live. Of course, whether you are running Garmin Live Scope, Lorentz Active Target or Hummingbird Mega Live, everybody is welcome here. Just a, you know, just a bunch of guys and gals getting, getting together each week, just trying to help each other out and see what type of success we can have out here on the water. All right, so I appreciate everybody for tuning in. So tonight, we're going to just hop right into it. And I know there's some other topics that some of you guys may have on your mind. So maybe after we go through a few things, then we can, um, you know, touch bases on some other hot topics that a lot of you guys have been hitting me up about. All right, so first, if you have not participated in the poll, there is a poll that is up and running in the chat, guys. All right, let me refresh this other screen real quick. Just bear with me. All right, so the poll for the evening, it is up and running. And basically, we just use our polls throughout the chat to, I mean, throughout the live stream to kind of gauge the room to see who we have visiting, who's tuning in, kind of give us some insight into what type of questions and questions we may um, be encountering throughout the show. All right, so the question that we have first up is, do you have Mega Live? live scope or Lorentz active target and right now okay we have some people trickling in and, and um getting active in the chat with that poll so right now we have 43 percent of you are running hummerbird mega live which you know i mean that's to be expected because this is a um a mega live uh live stream that we're going to be going over but some of the the tips and things like that kind of transfer over to other systems whenever we're just talking about bait tracking and things like that but for this evening what we're going to be mainly focusing on is the new update so if you guys do not know there is a new update 1.30 is the newest mega live update and i completed that update today i went out on the water and kind of tested it out so i actually contacted hummingbird directly to get some insight from them as far as any specifics as far as bait tracking as far as the quality of the image um you know just things like that as far as the um what to expect from the uh all right i see you guys getting active in the chat you know from this update and you know didn't really get too much information on that so what I decided to do and what I was going to do anyway is head out to the lake and find out for myself so that I can relay that information to you guys. So that is what I did for today. And I will play a little bit of footage from when I was out on the water today just to kind of show you some of the tracking. And um, I know a lot of people are interested in the image quality. So I'll show you that with the 1.30 update. And then I have some other footage where someone was asking me about the different size of the units. And I guess the question is, does size matter? <laughs> does it? Does size matter? So we will find out because I have a comparison with a 10 inch screen and a 12 inch screen. So we'll be able to um, have a direct, direct comparison with that, guys. All right. So right now, do you have Mega Live, Live Scope, or Active Target? We have 48% of you guys that are viewing are running Mega Live. But hopefully, we can still get in here and share some information that will help everyone out. All right. So. Um, just bear with me. Let me just check in the chat real quick. You know, I always like to check and see 
who we have checking in, and then we will get right into the meat of the show tonight, guys. This one shouldn't be too long because, like I said, we're going to um, dive right into some on-the-water footage from earlier today, and then I have um, maybe two or three other clips that I'll show you guys that I think have some very pertinent information. And also, can't forget, we are going to go over some of the details that um, – we are expecting well that the details that are included in the update for today all right so let's see who do we have checking in of course we have joe winkler big shout out to joe winkler he is the sponsor he is the current sponsor of the live stream guys each week what i say is whoever gives the largest super chat super sticker during the live stream is the sponsor of the live stream right now that sponsor is joe winkler he was active today while we were out on the water um, doing the live show a little earlier. So big shout out to you. Really, really appreciate you for tuning back in. All right. Then we have M. Who is M? Haven't heard of M before. It says, will Cerebral Tackle be here? I don't know. You never know who's going to be showing up. We'll see. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Make sure you guys, please yes, sir. hit the like button for me. It really, really does help out the channel. And the likes, I must say, are looking kind of slim right now. So if you could, please hit the like button, guys. And let's see. Let me see where we're at on the likes. All right, so yeah, we can get a few more likes as soon as we hit 25 likes. I mean, I'm not asking for much. Can I get maybe like six, seven more likes? Then I'll go ahead and pull up the first clip. And that first clip will be um, the on the water footage from today where we did some bait tracking with the 1.300 update. I know that is the thing that a lot of people are most interested in. So we're going to get straight to that. All right, so just double checking those likes, guys, and then I'm going to hop back into the chat. As soon as I see those likes come up a little bit, uh-oh, they're moving, they're moving. Let me hop back into the chat real quick. All right, re really appreciate that, Delta Bass. All right, we have Stevie Stevie Case is always ready to learn. All right, really appreciate that. All right, M says, isn't the update just improving the image in rough water? So there's a little bit more to that. There's a little bit more to that. So we'll talk about that real quick. Shout out to Vernon Neal, longtime supporter of the channel. Really appreciate you for tuning in. All right, and let's see. Wait a minute. Did I miss something? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, guys. Stop the show. We have a current sponsor. We have a new sponsor of the live stream. And what I just mentioned was whoever gives the largest super chat, super sticker during the live stream is the sponsor of that live stream. And it just happens to be the serial intellectual. Uh-oh, the serial intellectual is stepping in. Now, the serial intellectual, are you into fishing? Or are you just here to see what are these fishing guys talking about over here? But really, really appreciate it. So let me hop in here and do a little work. And, you know, I have to go ahead and get this, the show started on that one. Don't want to hold you guys. You know, so we do have a sponsor of the live stream. Just bear with me real quick. And it looks like you guys took care of me on the likes, too. Really, really appreciate that you guys are finding value in the live stream. And we haven't even got into anything yet. <laughs> All right, hold on one second, guys. So what I'm doing right now is just updating the banner. Um, the sponsor of the live stream each week, I do update this banner. Just a way to show some appreciation. And let me make sure I get the spelling right on here. Have to make sure I put some respect on your name. All right, the serial intellectual. All right, so there we go, guys. If you take a look at the bottom of the screen, you see the current sponsor of the live stream is the serial intellectual. Really, really appreciate that. It says special thank you so much to the sponsor of the live stream. All right, so let's go ahead and hop right into some content, guys. Um, just bear with me as I share my screen first. Let's see. Let's get this up here. So, yeah, we will get right into it. Also want to give a big shout out to the members of the money team. Those are the members of the channel, guys. And you will also notice them because they will have the banner next to their name. All right. So here we go. So this footage, I'm just sharing my screen now. So just bear with me. This is a live show. All right. So here we go. All right. So the footage that I'm pulling up is from earlier today. This is the 1.30 update. And I'm currently starting off throwing an A rig. And I have the, uh, you know, just a little bit of instruction here. But let me just go ahead and play this on the water footage. And then we will come back. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, continue to get active in the chat. The live streams always build off of the chat, guys. And you never know if you are networking in there who you may meet up with because you never know who's, who's um, watching and who also is participating in the chat. All right, so just bear with me, and let's go ahead and take a listen, guys. So first, what I do 
because I like make it, making a cast that may be about 30 feet out or so first. So that's not far at all. That'll be right, a, right around in that range. And that'll kind of let me see where that beam is at. So that hit right at about 50 feet. So all I, right, let me just pause it right here real quick. All right, so hopefully you guys can see on this on that left screen is a 12 inch helix g4n unit that is what i run my mega live system on i just made a cast and it hit i believe i said right around that 40 50 between 50 feet I, i'm thinking that's what i said 10 20 30 yeah around that 50 foot range so you can see that bait hit and just take note of the clarity the image clarity and the screen clarity a lot of people that is a question that I guess the one of the number one questions people ask is about screen clarity. The next thing is going to be about bait tracking. So that's why we're diving straight into the image clarity, as you can see, and the bait tracking. All right. So let's go ahead and hop back into it. And I'll just kind of walk you guys through um, what I'm what I'm doing on the screen. But here we go. Let's get back into it, guys. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm letting it, that's at 50 feet. It's going all the way down. You see that purple haze behind it? That is what I was referring to referring to as the that's the persistence mode i was thinking there may have been a fish falling behind it for a second all right so let's go ahead and reel that in so drop a um just put i can see it or i saw it in the chat if you guys saw that first cast so that was the first cast right at 50 feet you can see that structure is about 60 70 feet out let's go ahead and since that one looked pretty decent there we go. So that hit right at about 60 feet out. Can you guys see that falling right down to that cover? Let me just pop it and get it over it so it doesn't fall down straight into it. Now I'm letting it down fall right in front of that cover. Can you guys see that? And now I'm just running it right along the bottom. So that's at about that 50 foot range. Let me go ahead and bring it in. All right, so we're just starting off on some tracking, guys. Starting off on some tracking, throwing this A rig. Let me just hop into the chat, see what you guys say. Ronnie says, my boat has Lawrence. I got buddies that run Garmin and Hummerbird, so it's nice to know what I'm looking at from each brand when I ride along with them. All right, so yes, yeah, sounds good. All right, so could you guys see that first and second cast? I'm going to try to make this one maybe about 70 feet. Let's see if I can get that one out there 70 feet and keep it in the beam. The wind is blowing against me, guys. It hit right at 65 feet. Can you guys see that falling at 65 feet? It's right above that, that brush pile now. So now I'm just slow reeling it. All right. Don't hear you guys saying anything. I mean, well, I don't see anybody. All right. Thank you, Clint Perry. Clint Perry hopped in and said, yes, I can see it. All right, and there's that fish. It came out. That fish was like, hey, let me come out here and take a look at it. So now I'll try to, so I'm casting into the wind. So that's why it's kind of hard for me to get this past um, that 65, 70 foot range. Let's see if I can get it further that time. I can see the wind taking it each time. So that time it hit at 70. Can you guys see it falling right at 70? All right, and I'm out of the beam now. The wind was kind of blowing it. Let's see. I may be able to get it back into the beam. I just tapped the top of that brush pile just then. I felt it. All right. Brian Hindu says, looks good. I guess I have some work to do now in updating my unit. Oh, yeah. So right now, I'm not seeing any issues with it. Um, I guess the only issue I can see is going to be with me right now. And actually, I may just go into one of these codes since we're not really trying to catch anything we're just doing some bait tracking so that one right there hit at about 75 to 80 feet can you guys see it out there 75 to 80 feet if you saw it hit at 80 put 80 if you saw it hit at 80 so now we're at 70 let me speed it up a little bit and get it over that brush pile there we go i had to get it over that brush pile guys all right now i'm dropping it on the front side of it letting it come down that's about 50 feet out so that one, we were able to track it at about 80. All right. So you guys are keeping up. Shout out to the money team. We have Steve Nielsen checking in. Says he saw that. He hit, dropped an eight in the chat for me. All right. Let's see. Don, Don says, let's see. You bet. 
Z20 says, we see it great at 70. John says, never had anything live. Just got mega live and hope this is worth it. Very new to the live game. Oh, yeah, we're going to have some fun with it. So you came to the right place. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, actually, tonight's live stream, guys, for anybody that does not know, I do a weekly live stream every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Sometimes I, I slide in additional lives. I try to get out here on the water and do live streams every week. Um, today, um, I probably won't do any real fishing, trying to catch anything. Um, I may do that off camera since I, you know, still have to get everything set up the way that I want it as far as being able to target fish. And I may drop a separate video about, you know, about if I catch anything out here today. But All right. So there we go. Let's go ahead and pause it right there. So that footage that you guys were watching, that is pretty much me out there um, getting things set up. I did the I completed the update from the 1.290 to 1.30 um today and i immediately went out on the water so i had to completely set up my units so if any of you guys did join me out on the water today you saw me go through that entire process where i set the unit up first then i went and scanned and found that cover and actually let me just go back to that real quick for those that may not know what you're looking at let me see if i can actually blow that screen up a little bit um just bear with me guys let me just check something out this is a live show, so you know sometimes I have to change I mean, things well, I don't up a see little any... bit. Let me just pause that real quick. Oh, hold on. Maybe this is how I need to do it. There we go. There we go. All right. So over here, okay, there we go. You can actually see my mouse too. So good deal. Good deal. All right. So over here to the right, this U-shaped thing. <laughs> is actually a um, brush pal that I um, found whenever I was scanning around before we got started with everything. I um, got my unit set up to where um, I showed everybody my settings. I did look at the footage and see if the, the settings show were showing up good enough for you guys to see, but they weren't. But we'll talk about that in just a second once we go over the details of the update uh, of the update itself. But if you look on here, you do see this brush pal, and that is what I was targeting. Within those brush pals right now, with the water temps being around that 45 to 50 degrees, a lot of those fish are actually just pasted to the bottom. So you're not real. I wasn't really seeing any suspended fish that much as we scanned around a little bit later throughout that video on the water today. We were seeing some isolated fish, but for the most part, not really seeing too many fish today. And I did, you know, stay out there just a little bit longer after we finished up, caught one fish and headed back in so I could get ready for this evening. All right. So also in this clip, you will see right here is the bait that I was throwing. So I was throwing that bait. You could actually see it when it hit the water. It would fall down. Um, I did get a cast that I think you guys saw that um, hit around that 80 foot range. So that was right around in here. I let it fall down. And then I started reeling it in. I had to speed it up to get it over that cover so it would not get hung up on that cover. Got it right over that cover and then dropped it back down so that you guys, um, you know, could could track that bait along with with me. So what I generally do whenever I first complete the update and I want to track baits, I will start off with something like an A-rig. Then I will make sure I get into an area where the boat isn't moving around as much and I can focus on the different baits that I'm going to be throwing. So I will throw an A-rig first. Then I may so throw something like a jig, a shaky head, a crankbait, uh, definitely a jerk bait, and just kind of get used to seeing how big those different lures look on the screen and how they are able to move. And also another key thing, guys, is even when you're looking at the direction that you have your live image and transducer facing, you have to get, um, you know, just have to get used to where that bait needs to land in the water in relation to the boat in order for it to stay in that beam. So as you heard me talking just a minute ago, I was saying, oh, I didn't get it inside of the beam. It's kind of moving out of the beam. And so that is what is going to allow you to be able to keep track of that bait. All right, so I'm going to hop back into the chat real quick to see if any of you guys have any questions or anything about what you just saw. And the next thing that I'm going to show you is, let's see, what is that next clip that we had up here? All right, so the 1.290 is what I just up, um, updated from. And I do have some tracking footage from that. So I want to show you guys the 1.290. And you can kind of look at that in comparison to the 1.30 that we just finished looking at. But let's hop back in the in the chat real quick just to see 
you know, how you think, how you guys think, think things are going. But again, want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of the live stream, the serial intellectual. He hit the channel with a $10 super chat. Really, really appreciate that. Each week, whoever gives the largest super chat super sticker during the live stream is the sponsor of that live stream. So big shout out to the serial intellectual. And I think the Siri intellectual might be doing some things on YouTube. So make sure you go out there and check out his channel. All right, let's see. He says, I used to fish a lot. Need to get back at it. All right, sounds good. I live in Tampa now, so need to get in the game. All right, so do we have anybody else in the chat that is down in the Tampa area? That is another thing about getting in the chat, getting active and networking with guys, because you never know who else is in your area who may be fishing the same tournaments or just the same lake. So it's always good to get in here, kind of introduce yourself and see who may be in the same neck of the woods as you. All right, shout out to Ray M says, plan for the week, 10 pounder. <laughs> oh, so you're just jumping straight to a 10. You're not going to start off with a two or anything or a five to get warmed up. You're just going straight for the 10. Well, I need a seven. I'm looking for a seven sometime this tournament season because we have something called the mega bass pot. And you need a seven or better. So I'm going to be at um, Chickamauga, going to be at Eufaula, Lake Sinclair, and Lake Oconee. Those are known to have some big fish in it, but I don't really know. Does anybody fish those lakes? Have you heard of any seven-pound fish coming out of Lake Sinclair or Lake Oconee lately? If you have, drop it in the chat. Just let me know. Let me know. All right, let's see what else we have. So Doug Mead says, is this forward-facing or side imaging? All right, big shout out to Doug. That is why we do these live streams and we want to continue networking with guys. And hopefully somebody in the chat has already answered Doug's question. But if not, I'll answer it for you. That is forward facing sonar. Um, let me just take a look real quick and see if I can. I was just trying to see if I could have it to where you could still see my screen. But if you take a look at the screen itself, where you see that 20 in the top left hand corner, that is where the boat would be located on that screen. And then where you see that U shaped, um, it's, it's a brush paddle where you see that U shape going towards the middle of the screen that is shooting out to the front of the boat, about 60 feet or so in front of the boat. So that's just kind of a quick breakdown of how you can read the forward facing sonar. But yes, this is forward facing sonar that we're looking at right now. All right. So Ray says he saw it. He, he saw the, um, the bait go down and, and we could track it and everything. All right. Shout out to Malcolm says, that's cool. All right. So you guys are moving a little bit in the chat. All right. So, yeah, just definitely make sure if you guys have any questions or anything like that, make sure you drop those in the chat. If I don't answer it, maybe there's somebody in the chat that can't answer it. And again, whether you are running Garmin Live Scope, Lorenz Active, Active Target or Hummingbird Mega Live, everybody is welcome here to the chat. And also that reminds me of the poll. Let's go ahead and change this poll up right now. The first question that we had was, do you have mega live live scope or active target? And we're sitting at, okay. And check this out. We have 18% are saying they don't have any of it. So we have 46% are saying you have mega live. Then we have 27% at live scope and 11% are saying you have active target and 17% are saying you don't have any of them. So maybe you're trying to, you know, Tune in to see how it looks and trying to make a decision on whether you should move forward with the um with getting forward facing sonar. And if so, maybe Mega Live is something that you are considering because you may already be running Hummingbird products and you know it'll just be easy to go ahead and integrate that into the system. All right. So let's see. Then we have Bass with Big Malone checking in. All right, what's going on? Glad you are checking into the live stream. All right, let's see. Then Don says that's a good picture. So yeah, so straight out, um, you know, straight. On the water immediately after the live stream without doing too much tweaking as far as the settings the image quality was pretty good in my opinion and the screen clarity was good but as you guys know i don't necessarily always adjust my screen to where i can get the best clarity because to me i feel like that kind of diminishes some of the returns that i need in order to um see those fish or the cover or my bait the way that I want it. So I, I don't always run mine completely crisp and clear, but for the live streams and for you guys, whenever I'm doing it, I do dial it in and get everything, you know, kind of nice and clean for you. All right. So Ray says he saw it also. Let's see what else we have in here. Who? Uh oh, big shout out to Mark Scott. We have Mark Scott checking in. So Mark, I know you are one of the King hummingbird 
mega live mega 360 mega this mega that got target lock and everything have you completed the update to 1.30 and if so um how what kind of results are you getting so with this one that um update went through very smoothly for me i did not have any issues the only thing that i noticed is that file may be a little bigger than what it normally has been and with that being the case I noticed that whenever I put the SD card into the unit, I maybe had to uh, I had to leave it in there for maybe like maybe two or three minutes before the update actually started taking place for me. So it may be different for you guys, but that's something to keep in mind whenever you do that update and you put the chip in there. It may not start updating immediately. All right. So Mark Scott says I'm running mega live on my bass boat and I just ordered one from uh, from pro bass for my Erie boat tonight. Man, you're over here mega live and everywhere. So you're going to have two mega lives on two different boats. All right. Living the good life. All right. Eat Squawk says, let's see. Cerebral Tackle is listening. Just finishing up some things real quick. Okay. So, so I guess CT knows somebody was asking for him. All right. Then we have David checking in. What is going on, David? Glad you're uh, checking into the live stream. All right. And Vernon Neal says, I'm sure you updated your graphs as well. That is correct. So anybody that is thinking about doing the update, um, we're going to get into that. But I know people always want to get straight to the meat of the program. So I wanted to go ahead and show you the on the water footage. I'm going to show you a little bit more on the water footage with the 1.290 and a little bit of tracking with that. And after that, then I can pull up some information to go over a few things that you need to take note of with this update, guys. All right. So Don says updates scare me sometimes. I'm glad to watch others try it first. Hey, man. I mean, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> I, I'm your guinea pig, right? You're waiting to see. Let's see what happens to Money Bass when he, when he tries it. Let's let him walk into that dark room first to see what happens on the other side. We hear any screaming. We know not to go in. All right, let's see. So Jim says, he says, I'm up north, Sw uh, Swanee County. All right. Uh, I'm up north, Swanee County. Okay, all right. Sounds good. We have people checking in from a little bit of everywhere. All right, let's see. Ronnie says, I agree with you, Don. Updates can be sketchy. Oh, yeah. Updates can be a little sketchy. Yes, sir. But, hey, I'll go ahead and dive in and, and bite the bullet for you guys. And last time, as you know, I definitely did bite the bullet. But I would say it was a good thing because it kind of let us know an issue that we had with those transducers. And if you guys have been following the channel, you know that I was able to drop an exclusive for the members only in the members only section of how I was able to get a new Mega Live transducer immediately. So I know a lot of guys waited and it took them a little time to get theirs, but I was able to get mine probably within three to four days from the time that I took it off my boat and send it in. So that's one of the perks of being a member of the money team, guys. All right, so yeah, so those updates, yeah, those updates, you have to watch them sometimes. All right, so Fat Guy Fishing, he says, excellent way to answer that last question, buddy. Have to remember, not everyone is experienced with these systems. Good job. Oh, yeah, I mean, what we are doing, guys, is we meet here every week, Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, whether you are a novice, whether you're an expert. We have pros that are checking in that are watching. They don't always get active in the chat, but they're watching, guys. So we have every, people from all experience levels. We actually, believe it or not, we have people that aren't even into fishing at all that come along and watch the live stream. They just Maybe they would just want to see the question answer se uh, segment. And also, that is another thing, guys. Um, after I play the last clip, I'm going to drop the link because this is a very interactive live stream. I will drop the link. Just make sure that you are cammed up and I will bring you up on the screen. If you have any questions or anything, then you can ask your questions or comments. You know, we'll, we'll have some fun with it. But I do bring you guys up so that we can, um, like I said, keep it very interactive. But yeah, I really appreciate that fat guy fishing. We try to, you know, make sure we help everybody out in here. We don't, it doesn't matter whether you run Garmin, Lawrence, Hummingbird. I mean, we're all still people out here trying to have a good time out on the lake. And you never know how much time you have on the lake or how much some time somebody else has on the lake. And there are a lot of guys that are kind of living vicariously through us because they cannot get out on the water. It could be financial issues, could be health issues, guys. So I try to do the on the water live streams with that in mind to try to, you know, try to keep people in tune with the outdoors a little bit when we're out there. All right. So good deal with that. All right. Don says I carry junk on my live scope. Um, too, because if you do too much, 
um, you'll take away. Right. Yeah. So he keeps a little noise on his on his also. So I run mine hot because I to me, it helps me track my bait. I can definitely see the fish better. And somebody was asking me about fish separation. So for me, it kind of helped with all of that. And the more you get used to looking at the screen, the you know, the more you'll be able to um, to read it, read it and um, determine what you're actually seeing on the screen. All right. Big shout out to Doty Fishing. We have Doty Fishing checking in. He is a member of the money team. What does Doty have to say? He says, money, did you have to repair your target lock um, post updates? I did. Hmm. Oh, um, to pair it again, basically pair it back into the system. So for me, I did not have to pair the target lock back to the um, unit at all. It's It stayed intact. And at the beginning of the on the water video today and actually it's in the member section now so you can go in there and take a look at it that is one of the things that i checked i was thinking well i saw immediately that the foot pedal was still working so it was able the target lock was able to move left and right um the target lock worked but at first i was thinking that the uh minkota steer was not working that it wasn't following the trolling trolling motor but um i didn't have a problem with that either so everything still stayed connected for me once i completed the update good question good question i'm pretty sure somebody else may um may have been thinking about that all right let's see what else we have in here what else do we have mark scott says i haven't updated yet i just found out about it tonight uh oh there we go guys there we go so we're helping we're helping out the members of the money team trying to help out these fishermen out here make sure everybody's out here having a good time on the water all right let's see almost caught up all right one more let's see what vernon neal has to say he says for what it's worth i didn't have to repair and when we're saying repair guys we're talking about bluetooth pairing not actually something like there's something broken that needs to be repaired but we're pairing the two units back back um to each other all right. And then Ray says I had to reconnect to my foot control. Mine stayed connected. So I don't know. I don't know. All right. And let's see. Mark Scott says I might go out next Saturday, um, but the high will be in the lower 30s. Yeah. A little chilly outside. A little chilly. All right. Let's go ahead and change this poll question up and, and keep moving with that. And guys, if you could, if you could check out the likes. See if you can set the set the hook on the like button for me, guys. It really, really does help out the channel. Once I see these likes move up a little bit, I have another clip that I will pull up. But first, let's just read out this poll and then drop the next poll in here. And if you guys have any questions for the group that you want me to put as a poll question, just put poll and then put what the um, what you think is a su good suggestion for a poll question, and I can drop that in the chat. And again, these poll questions are just to gauge the room, guys. All right. All right. So let's change that up real quick. And next, what we're going to take a look at is some more bait tracking. This is going to be a little more interesting than the first one. So uh, just stay tuned for that. Let me just change this up real quick. But do you have Mega Live, Live Scope, or Active Target? 51% are sitting on that Mega Live system. All right. So and Live Scope, we're sitting at 23%. Active Target is 9%. And 18% of you guys are not running any of the systems at all. All right, so let's go ahead and end that poll so that lets you guys know who is watching this evening. All right, so now let's start this new poll. All right, so for the guys that are running Mega Live, hmm, let's see, what should the next question be? What should the next question be? Let me just double check this. Okay, are you happy with the image? Well, let's see. Let's see if you... um. Let's go with this one. So are you happy with the quality of the images that you're getting and your bait tracking? Let's just see where you guys are, are at with that. So are you happy with the image quality and bait tracking of your system? So I know you guys have seen mine. It seems like a lot of you are thinking, you know, like I am, that the bait tracking for me, you know, it, it's looking pretty good. All right. So with Mega Live. All right. And we'll keep it real simple. We'll go with a yes and we will go with a no. All right. So there we go. That poll is up and running. So make sure you guys participate in the poll. It really does help the live stream in general because the live stream builds off of the participation of the chat 
So the question that we have right now is, are you happy with the image quality and bait tracking with Mega Live? So I know a lot of people have these type of questions, but in a group like this, you can get immediate feedback. So that is a good deal with this, guys. All right, so make sure you, um, you guys take a look at that poll and reply to that. And just bear with me as I drop this down. I am going to bring up this next clip for you guys. All right, so this next one was a good one. This next one is a good one, guys. All right, let me share my screen. All right, so this is a live show. So just bear with me while I'm um, getting things set up for you guys. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this next clip. And again, this is version 1.2. 290. So this was me out tracking my bait prior to completing the 1.30 update. Just so you guys can kind of compare what you just saw with what you are about to watch now. And maybe you'll see some difference in screen clarity, bait tracking. I don't know. I don't know. You guys let me know. Let's go ahead and take a look and let me know what you think. You see the fish coming up towards it. Let's see if they're going to hit it again. All right, hold on one second. Let's back it up just a little bit. Oh, no, that's good. That's good. Hold on. Here we go. All right, here we go. Just had to get it to the right mark. Here we go, guys. For you guys that like to get a clearer picture, let's just play around with the settings real quick and see if we can clear up some of this, um, some of this extra noise right here and just get this a little uh, more crisp. For you guys that like a, a clear image so let's hit the menu key once and go all the way down here to sensitivity and we'll just start cranking this up see it's sitting on 20 already so i'm running that real hot so let's crank it back the other way all right and you see how much that's clearing it up that way so let's go ahead and put it all the way back up here where that was at and now let's drop down to the contrast now the contrast is what will get rid of that extra um kind of noise that you were seeing on there so take a look at that right there so that picture is real crisp all i did was uh boosted that contrast up to around seven but let's go back down again and you see the the noise starting to come back into it i kicked it down to one let's go all the way down a little farther you see the further down we go the more of that noise you're going to get so if we crank it back up to around that six seven range you're still able to get a clear picture there's some fish sitting down there and as you guys know those are probably catfish because i just caught one all right, and let's see the other thing we can take a look at real quick. Dynamic contrast, I have that on high. If we put that on low, you see it kind of changes the picture a little bit. So these are some things that you kind of want to play around with to get the picture to the way that is best for you. So there's no one setting that would necessarily fit all, but this is just a starting point for you guys that are asking me about the settings. All right, so here we go. Let's just run through them again real quick so you guys can see exactly how I have everything set up. All right, so we start up here. The mega live pinging is on. I keep it on forward mode. And now let's drop down here to the forward display mode. I have that on 30. Auto sensitivity. Contrast, I have that turned off. Let me just turn it on real quick so you guys can see what kind of difference that's, that makes. So with it off, you see how it, it kind of makes things pop a little bit more for me. So I like leaving that um, off right now. Uh, let's see. Let's go on down to the sensitivity. Of course, we have that on 16. Let's just play around with that real quick. So for me, like I said, I like running mine hot. You see how it made these out here pop a little bit better. So let's dial it down and just watch how those fish kind of get more and more faint. But if we crank it back up, see how they come back and they start getting brighter. So that makes everything pop a little bit better for me. Um, contrast, I just showed you guys what the contrast does. Um, dynamic contrast on high. Forward range, I have it set out to 95 feet, guys. So you can get some good distance out of here once you learn how to read the uh, the screen and know what you're looking for. Um, the Mega Live Colors on three. Persistence mode, again, that is high, and that is that purple haze. So these fish are moving from right to left now, and it leaves that trail right behind it. That's why I like using that purple haze. That's how I dial in my system. Let's take a look at some bait tracking and what it looks like when you actually catch a fish with live imaging. And just uh, watch some of these fish down here. So right here, we have some fish on this cover. There are some fish actually in this cover, and you can see them coming, moving in and out right there at the top. They'll come out and go back down into that cover. These bright areas that are in here, those are the fish. And you see these fish right here just kind of suspended. They're sitting at about 25 feet down. 
and right now there's kind of a glare from the sun um i'm kind of guessing that's what this is up here it does not show up all the time it really has just depended on where i have been at on the lake um sometimes i'll have this on the screen sometimes i won't and of course um everybody that was around dealing with this type of uh noise at the top of the screen during the pollen season we know that that is a big issue once that pollen season uh starts up all right so let's just take a look and see what we have down here so here's some fish that are traveling towards that brush pile and you see they're coming from left to right and they're leaving that purple haze behind them so that is the persistence mode so it just lets you see from what direction those fish are, are traveling so it's basically like a trail all right so there we go so you can see those fish sitting right on the top of the brush pile there's some fish right in here in between sitting at about 60 feet out all right so let me go ahead and get this cast in here and what i'm doing is just trying to cast right in between here so we can see how those fish react to this bait all right and there we go the cast hit at about 50. you can see my bait kind of falling down right here and let's just track it all the way down there's some fish right here waiting for that bait to come down there all right, there is the shaky head falling right down in there with those fish rat. Let's see if they follow it down. Yep, so you can see those fish kind of followed it, but they did not follow it all the way down to the bottom. So those may not be bass guys. Could be some striper out there. Sometimes those are kind of curious and will still check out the bait. All right, so that is the shaky head. Let me see if I can get one more cast out there for you. And you can see it as it's coming back to the boat right here. All right, there we go again, hit right at about 55. It's kind of pendulum back uh, to me right now, but that's the bait. My cast, my, I was trying to get it right here to set, try to get those fish to react right there, but there you go. It's kind of going in and out of the beam. We're kind of out here in some uh, choppy water, but let me go ahead and reel it in and make one more cast so you guys can take a look at that. And that's the shaky head, guys. You can see it coming back to the boat now. I'll throw it out just a little bit farther, try to hit it right at about the 65 foot range. All right, so I hit it at about 60. You can see the bait falling right here. I'm not really getting it in the beam too good, but there you go. And there's another fish sitting right out here, right below the boat. All right, that uh, shaky head just went straight down into that brush pile. And you see some other fish coming out here. They're heading toward the brush pile right now. All right, so now we're going to throw a moving bait. I'm going to throw this and try to get it out here around the 85, 90 uh, foot range, bring it above this uh, cover out here and see if we can get those fish to start uh, coming up to it so you guys can see how that looks. All right, so I'm just slow rolling this bait. I'm gonna try to bring that right above the heads of those fish. And take a look at these fish out here. You can see that fish swimming around pretty fast. And that purple haze behind it, that is the persistence mode that I was telling you guys about. All right, so I'm just slow rolling a bait out here. Um, I probably did not get it inside of the beam because I'm not seeing it right now. But I just want to see if the fish will still react to it whenever it uh, comes across where those fish are at. Okay, there they go. You can see those fish coming up towards it. I just had a fish tap it. It's kind of in the beam. There it goes, and there's a fish right behind it. All right, so this is that Mega Live 1.290, guys. And just keep in mind that the settings that I have, I have it running hot. That's why you have this extra noise in here. Um, what I'll do, um, I'll make one more cast with this, and then I'll, uh, I'll adjust those settings to get rid of this noise just to show you guys, anybody that's wanting to know how clear the picture can get, I'll go ahead and make some quick adjustments so you guys can see that.
and there we go. So those are the fish that were following the bait all the way back. If I wasn't talking, I probably uh, would have been able to catch that fish. But whenever it hit, I just kind of stopped reeling. But you can see that the fish are still coming this way and leaving that purple haze behind, which is the persistence mode. All right, let's go ahead and make one more cast and then we'll make some adjustments on the settings. All right, so with that cast, I tried to get that one out here around that 80 to 90 foot range again. I'm gonna count it down and just try to bring it right across here. Maybe it will be inside the beam, so we'll see it this time, maybe not. But like I said, we're out here um, kind of bouncing around a little bit. It's a little, uh, little, just a little choppy out here. There we go, there's another fish. You can see that purple haze behind him, so you can see which direction that fish is moving, coming from left headed to the right, headed toward that cover. All right, now you can see those fish starting to react right here. There's my bait. Let me let that bait drop down. Can you see it? So I'm gonna let it drop all the way down here to that brush pile, see if a fish will come out of there and follow it. Right now, the fish are kind of inactive. You can see these fish down here on the bottom kind of taking a look at it. There's my bait moving. You see the fish coming up towards it. Let's see if they're going to hit it again. Uh-oh, guys. Now, that is a hookup. Whoo, that is a hookup right there. Okay, let me see if I can get him away from that cover. I guess you can't get too much, too much better than that. All right, so what do you guys think about that action? What do you think about that? Oh, yeah, let's get some hand claps for that one right there. So basically, that was the 1.290. That was prior to me doing the 1.30 update. The 1.30 update went through nice and clean, no issues or anything like that. And as far as the settings go, the same way that I walked you through those settings with the 1.290 version is the same way that I walked through the 1.30 version. Um, I just need to spend a little bit more time on the water with it. And you know, of course, I'll keep giving you guys some updates on it because we do a little bit of everything here. We talk about some hot topics, we talk about fishing, we do some tournament fishing, tournament videos on the water videos. So, hey, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, might need to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. And also, if you did not hit the like button, please hit a like for me because it really does help push out the channel, guys. We are growing very, very fast. We have a lot of people coming in. I want to give a big shout out to the members of the money team. Those are the members of the channel. And if anybody is finding value in the content and is inter and you are interested in becoming a member of the channel, just click the join button down below. It'll give you a little bit of information about becoming a member of the channel. Those are the people that I refer to as the money team. And you would notice them because they will have the badges right next to their names. All right. So I have, let's see, I have another clip that I'm going to play you guys in just a minute. But of course, what I was saying is make sure you get active in the chat. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you put those in there. I did see a few come in. So I'm just checking to see. All right. So for the next clip um, that I'm going to play is what someone was asking me about earlier today about the different size of the screens. Does size matter? Does it? Does size matter? We're going to find out, guys. We'll see what you think. I'll let you guys answer that question. All right, so let's hop back into the chat real quick, and I will then – let me just take a look and see if anybody says – let me see. Uh, all right, all right, just checking before I drop down that um, that video. And just bear with me. This is a live show, guys, so um, – I just have to get in here and get some things set up. There we go. All right, just bring it up. I'm just getting this next clip queued up for you guys. All right, here we go. Where did it go? Where did it go? All right, so this next clip, I think you guys will find this very, very interesting. But like I said, let's hop back into the chat real quick and uh, see what you guys were saying. See if anybody had any questions or comments based on that footage that you saw. You got to love that whenever you're able to you know, you're out there on the water trying to show some people some things and the fish want to cooperate, too. Oh, yeah. Got to love it. All right. So let's see. Where were you guys at? All right. So Jim said, I just did the like thing. Yes, sir. I just hit that like button. Really, really appreciate it. Whoa. My goodness. You guys are hitting me up on those likes. Really, really appreciate it. Let me just double check. 
is it true? Is it real? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, really appreciate that, guys. It really does help the uh, the videos and the channel whenever you guys hit the like button and um, get that that interactive um, thing going for me. All right. So let's see. Who else do we have? Texas Noop says, Fishing with Gramps. What's good? What is going on? Fishing with Gramps. Checking back into the live stream. All right. And who else do we have? So Mark Scott says, Money, do you like any of the crankbaits I've been painting? Oh, yeah, Mark Scott, you're doing your thing. I know you're going to catch some five or six pounders out there. I mean, that that one that has the chartreuse in there and, you know, kind of a mixture of those colors. So, yeah, you're definitely doing your thing. I'm interested to see what you're going to do with some of those swim baits. Um, for you guys that don't know that may have missed um, some of the previous lives, I'm trying to get into the swim bait game this year because I am targeting. I need one seven pounder on the one lake. That will get me that mega bass pot. And actually, I'm going to reach out to some guys that are into um, fishing those big swim baits. And maybe we'll have another special guest coming to the live stream. So I have uh, maybe two people, two or so people in the queue that should be coming up. So, yeah, it's always an interesting conversation during these live streams, guys. All right. So now let's see what else. Hopping back into the chat. All right. Let's see. All right. So Vernon Neal, he said, let me see. Typically should only have to repair and that means pairing the units through the Bluetooth, um, your target lock, when the target lock update is loaded. So there isn't a new update for the target lock. It will kind of talk about that in the um, instructions for the update. So you just want to make sure you're on the current version. I believe it's one point, um, target lock is 1.180, I believe. And the old tricks. I believe it's 1.440, but that's also in the instructions, guys. So don't always take people's words for it. You definitely want to make sure you read those instructions. And if you have any questions, make sure you hit up Hummingbird Support. They are always very helpful. All right, let's see. JS says, did your update make a difference? All right, so for me, um, I wasn't really out there long enough today after I completed the update. Then I did some bait tracking and things like that. So for me, I definitely did not see anything. Um, as far as comparing those two, that's pretty much why I played the 1.30 first and then the 1.290. So I haven't used it enough yet to be able to answer that question. But maybe after I go out there, maybe two or three more times, then I can I may be able to see some small changes in there is what I think that it will be. But whenever we talk about the details in just a minute, um, you'll see um, something that I was referring to as far as um, the image quality. In just a second. All right. Z20 says, what's going on, Money Bass? All right. What's going on? Glad to see you in the live stream. All right. Jim says, hey, Money Bass, I like that purple haze too. Jimmy was the best. <laughs> what kind of purple haze are you talk talking about there, Jim? All right. I see you. I see you, Jim. Got to keep my eye on Jim over here. All right. Texas Newt says, Money, do you know if Active Target has persistence mode? All right, so we do have people that are in the chat that run Garmin and Lowrance. So for um, those that do not know, persistence mode in Mega Live is that purple haze. So when you saw those fish swimming around, there was a purple trail that was behind those fish. And that just kind of lets you be able to see those fish a little better. And it lets you track them so you can see if they're moving away from the boat or coming towards the boat. A lot of times that does help out. So if anybody knows if Lowrance has something equivalent to persistence mode that will cause a trail behind um your move your bait I'll, that's another thing that you want um as far as being able to track your bait so if anybody knows that please drop that in there for texas newt uh-oh you guys are starting to get active in the chat let me try to move through here real quick and then what i will do is um Actually, let's go ahead and check this poll out and then we'll move on to the next next poll question. Are you happy with the image quality and bait tracking with Mega Live? We have 73 percent of you are saying yes and 27 percent of you are saying no. Uh Oh, that is not good. So for the 27 percent that are saying no, you're not happy with the image quality. Just give us a, um, you know, an explanation or give us some information about that. Maybe there's something that is with your settings or maybe there's something that you will put in your reply in the chat and we can help you out with that so we can get you over to that yes side of things because hey guys even if we're competing against against each other out there on the lake still you know we want to make sure you're still out there having a good day on the lake guys you never know how much time we have out there on the lake so we have to make the most of it whenever we can get out there all right let's see what else we have all right so tweezy what is going on 
Big shout out to Tweezy. Yes, sir. All right. He says, got to get me one. So you don't have your um a four-facing sonar yet? Oh, yeah, because you're fishing on the kayak side of things, I believe, right? Were you fishing out of a kayak? I can't remember. All right. Then we have Corey says, dope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Catching those fish live like that. Hey, it's a good feeling. It's fun. It's fun. You know, you get out there and have a little fun with it. All right. Don says, guess I'll just uh, turn my trails on just to see how I feel about it myself. Yeah, try it out. You never know. Just reach down there, turn it on, turn it off. And you can set it on low, um, medium, high, or turn it off. You know, whichever way works best for you. All right, so fooling fish. All right, <laughs> fooling fish. You're out there doing your thing. And big shout out to another member of the money team. Fooling fish says the 1.30 is way more clear than the 1.290. Okay. All right. So is that from personal experience or are you just noticing that from the comparison that I just did during the live stream? So because, yeah, I mean, it definitely does look good um, straight with without doing any adjustments in or anything like that. Any of the changes of the settings with the, the sensitivity or contrast, it definitely, you know, looked very clear to me whenever we first started with the live stream earlier today. All right. Ray says, how do I get um, the money bass T-shirt? OK. All right. You kind of kind of like the, the money bass money bass t-shirt huh um there should be a link down in the um it should be down below the video down where the join button is sometimes they have merch down there but if not just go directly to the money bass channel and you'll see the link for the merch on there so yeah so there's hats shirts um hoodies things like that in there so yeah check it out really appreciate that right all right so let's see Doty fishing says new rule in my oil field derby uh-oh uh-oh what kind of rules we have going on, Doty? He says, fishermen are not allowed to use fish finders to locate fish. What? <laughs> Such as live scope, active target, 360. Oh, no, no 360 prior to the start of the tournament. Wow. Prior to the start of tournament fishing for hours. Um, tournament fishing hours. Wow. So wait a minute. So they can't use electronics before the tournament, but they can use them during the tournament. Is that pretty much what's happening right there? Hmm. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. All right. Ray says great footage. All right. Really, really appreciate that. Yeah. I try to get out there and bring some good footage to you guys. I always try to make sure that I'm bringing some value, whether it's entertainment or I mean, sometimes you may get on here and learn a little something. Or not or not. We never know. We never know. All right. So CT says, Mark Scott, I want to see those cranks. Oh, yeah. He's been hitting me up on Instagram, sending me a lot of good pictures. So um, is there some place? Do you sell those um, your crankbaits, uh, Mark? If so, drop a link in there where people can take a look at some of those crankbaits. because they're, they're some nice looking crankbaits, guys. All right. Mark Scott says, I'm doing some amazing cranks you would love. Oh, yeah. They've been looking good. All right. Eat Squat says, you don't need uh, swimsuits. Just hire a better diver. <laughs> hey, I mean, I didn't need a diver this time. You saw, hey, things were looking looking pretty good, pretty good. All right, so let's see. Let's see. Just trying to get caught. Up. Okay, I'm, I'm almost caught up with you guys. Let's just check real quick. So what I'm doing right now is just scrolling through. I'm just checking through the chat real quick because I like to keep these live streams interactive. The other thing that I'm going to do in just a minute is drop the link for you for the for anybody that wants to call in. So I do a live call in also, guys. So if anybody wants to come up, I don't know if anybody really will be wanted to come up on this one necessarily because a lot of you guys are dropping your um, questions and everything down in the chat. All right, so let's see what else we have. Mark Scott, get me the the deets. All right, looking for the details on that. Let's see what else you guys have. In here. <laughs> All right, yeah, you guys are having some fun in here. All right, let me see. <laughs> I see you eat squawk. I see eat squawk in here getting. All right. Let's see. Mark Scott says, I'm getting ready to do swim baits next, waiting on them to get here. Oh, yeah. I want to see what, see what you do with some swim baits. All right. Let me see. Almost caught up, guys. Uh-oh, guys. Who is this? Who do we have here? All right. As you guys know, this is the Bass Geek. He's pretty big out here on the YouTube side of things. Let's see. What does Bass Geek say? He says, that is an interesting take. No practice, but during tournament, you can. Hmm. I think I like it. He says, I think I like that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, it's a little something different. I mean, we're still fishing. So it's like, 
somebody can make up some rules and it's like in the end are we still fishing can we cast can we catch fish yeah you know i think i like that i think i like it so yeah i mean it, it sounds like it's pretty interesting all right it's a big shout out to bass geek make sure you guys go and check out his channel always putting out great content really really appreciate it and he was on the show just a few days ago well Maybe what is that about two weeks ago or so? But yeah, so I have some clips of um, me and Bass Geek chopping it up, and you know maybe this week or next week I'll drop a few clips from that for you guys to check out. All right, then we have Don checking in. He says, um, "Dodie, they was trying to ban it in hours. Wow. Okay, so man, the bans are real. It's real out there, guys. It's getting real out here in these YouTube streets and in these fishing streets, guys. They lost a lot of entries." <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. They lost a lot of entries after that. So they decided not to. Everybody was like, I'm not giving up the scopes. I'm not giving up my live scopes. <laughs> I am not giving up my scopes. They declined entry into the tournament. Wow. All right. So, of course, is how is that not regulated? I mean, how is that regulated? Yeah. I mean, that would be kind of tricky. I mean, do you actually like put some type of um bag or something around the actual transducer with a one of those seals to where you could tell if somebody broke it and used it or something kind of interesting kind of interesting but yeah i think there's going to be a lot of new things that are popping up um this season with all of the different controversies and things like that going on with live imaging all right let's see mark scott it won't let you um link but copy me and i'll post it all right there we go all right doug says getting ready to install mega live external transducer on trolling motor I heard a lot of negative on this in regards to the trolling motor movement as you go along the shoreline. Um, well, I actually have videos prior to obtaining my um, target lock. Shout out to one of my subscribers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was actually donated to the channel from one of my subscribers. So really, really appreciate that. All right. But yeah, so prior to having my target lock, I did have my unit connected directly to my trolling motor. And I do have some videos, tutorials out there showing how you can run down a row of docks, fishing an entire cove using the Mega Live on your um, trolling motor. And just to, you know, a quick breakdown of what I would do is you as you start getting momentum going down into the cove and you're passing the dock, say on your left hand side, you're just giving um, you're engaging the trolling motor and then you're letting off your trolling motor and then just steering with your foot pedal and facing that transducer and just kind of scanning it so you know it takes a little footwork you have to be able to handle that footwork but that's pretty much how i do it i engage the trolling motor get up enough speed and start kind of coasting with the trolling motor and stop engaging it and then just kind of sweep um with the foot pedal um myself but once you get that target lock you don't have to do that yes sir yeah oh yeah that's why people love that target lock all right let's see what else we have um in the chat guys uh-oh, wait a minute. Stop the show. We have a new sponsor of tonight's live stream. Live stream. Shout out to M. Jones. Says help for the program. All right, so you know what that means. Let me hop in here and do some quick work. This is a live show, guys, so just bear with me. Whoever gives the largest super chat, super sticker during the live stream is the sponsor of the live stream. Really appreciate that you guys are finding value in the content. Shout out to M. Jones. So let me hop in here and update the banner that we have scrolling down at the bottom of the screen. All right, so we have M. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Let me make sure I spell that right. Have to put some respect on his name. All right, so we have M. Jones. If you take a look now, you will see the banners reads. Special thank you so much to the sponsor of the stream, M. Jones. All right, so really, really appreciate that. All right, so let's see. What else do we have, guys? All right, so Dodie Fishing. Uh-oh, wait a minute. You kind of threw me off. But, hey, whenever you guys are, you know, hooking me up like this and I see that you're getting value in the content, let's just go ahead and hop straight into the next clip, guys. All right, so this next clip is um, basically in reference to a question that I heard earlier today. Well, not that I heard, <laughs> that I read earlier today during the On the Water Live. Somebody was wanting to know, should they get a nine inch screen 10 inch screen you know what size screen you know do they feel well do i feel or you guys in the chat what do you feel is going to be most effective wait a minute guys do we need to stop the show one more time we have a new member 
Big shout out to Chris Phillips, who has now joined the money team. So if everybody could, all the members of the money team, drop, you know, drop a big CP, not CT. We have CT in the chat, but drop Chris. Just drop that name, Chris, and welcome him to the money team. Really, really appreciate you supporting the channel. All right. So now um, what I'm doing is just sharing my screen. Just bear with me, guys. Like I said, this is a live show. But this next footage is something that I think um, you guys will definitely like here. Let me make sure. Oh, let me. So I have some mega live footage and then I have some 360 footage. So I want to show you guys both of those. All right. So let me share my screen. All right. Just bear with me, guys. Let me drop this down. All right. All right. So now let's take a look at this next bit of footage. So this is to answer the question, does size matter? <laughs> does size matter? What do you guys think? So we'll take a look at this and then I'll let you guys answer this. So on the bottom here, we have a, um, let me just see if I can make that a little bigger for you guys. So on the bottom is a 10 inch screen and yeah, my mouse isn't showing up here, but on the bottom, you have a 10 inch screen on the top. You have a 12. Both of them are on mega live. So this version may have been back when it was on 1. Um, 1.150 or 1.170, not really sure. But the thing that I want you to pay attention to is the comparison of the images that you see on these screens. And this is for people that are trying to decide should they get a smaller screen or a bigger screen. And, you know, people always say the bigger you can get, um, you know, just get the biggest screen that you can afford is generally the um, rule of thumb that you want to follow on this. But let's go ahead and take a look at it and let me know what you guys think. 65 feet, 60 feet. All right. And that was, I believe, the shaky head. Now, I know you guys know what that is. You can see all of those fish coming into that image. That is about... 65 feet out whenever you can see those fish. Put that spinner bait down, hurry up and picked up. I believe it was a shaky head or something like that. Look and you can see the fish reacting to it. Fish, guys. No, the G2N Helix is not compatible with Mega Live. It doesn't have a uh, live imaging capability. Needs watches. What's going on, man? Good to have you in the chat. Yeah, this is so, guys. This is my first live stream. I appreciate everybody stopping by, and I will get to the questions in just a minute. Just want to make sure I don't miss anything on the video. All right, Donald is asking, how do I get the history trail displayed? That is basically um, the persistence mode. That's and I have it turned on low. Right there. All right, guys, look at all that activity. What do you what are your guys' opinions on that? Put something down in the in the chat. I want to hear what you guys think about all of seeing all of that on the screen. Look at the activity of those fish, how you can track them. That purple haze behind the fish again is persistence mode. So that allows you to track the direction that the fish are, are heading. And look out at 65 feet. There's some more fish heading onto the screen right now. All right, guys. So basically, like I was explaining, this is just to show you guys the difference between a 10 inch screen and a 12 inch screen. So in the chat, what do you guys think? Do you think it makes a big difference from what you just saw from the footage that you just saw using that live imaging? You were able to see those fish, see the movement. Um, you can see the size comparison of those two screens. And I had the grid markers on. I believe I had the grid markers. on. Let me take a look. Right. Yeah. So I had the grid markers on at that time just to kind of um, get a gauge and kind of help with the, you know, differentiating between the size of the fish and the baits and everything like that. But what do you think? What do you guys think about the 10 versus the 12? Is it that big of a difference? What do you think? What do you think? I'm just looking in the chat to see what you guys have to say. All right. But once again, want to give a big shout out to the serial intellectual. All right. Really, really appreciate you for hitting the channel with that $10 super chat. And then big shout out to the current sponsor of the live stream. 
we have M Jones hit us up with the twenty dollar super chat. Really, really appreciate that. And of course, everybody, welcome Chris Phillips to the money team. He is a new member of the channel. Really, really appreciate the support, guys. All right, so I'm just checking in the chat, and then I have another clip that I'm going to play. Man, time flies when you're having fun, guys. So I have one more clip that I will play, and I'm just, just play a, a quick portion of this, and then I'm going to pull up some information about the um the update itself. Man, guys, time has been flying. All right, so let's just take a look. Let me just drop this real quick. And so you guys saw the live imaging. So let me drop this out of here and just bear with me. This is a live show. So I have to share my screen once again and pull up this 360 imaging. And again, I'm doing this for the guys that had that question and are just wondering, can I get away with getting a smaller um, graph or a bigger graph or what do I need to get? So this will just give you guys and um, some information as far as um, the 360. All right, so let's see what else you guys have to say. John said, whoa, that's cool. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's fun out here when, whenever you get out here um, on these lakes with these live images and these electronics and start learning a few new things. There's something to add to your um to your arsenal when you're out there on the lake. All right, M. Jones says the smaller one seems to pop up a fraction faster and it looks more clear. There you go, guys. So it just depends. It just depends. All right, Texas Noob says he agrees. All right, so it looks like you may not necessarily need to have a bigger screen. It just depends. But then you can always go into Bass Pro or someplace like that and just kind of compare the, the screens there also. All right, so uh, let's see what else we have. All right, so Jim says the bigger screen, um, <laughs> the bigger the screen, the, the better. Ben Milliken just got a huge one. I think it's a 21. Oh, yeah. He has like a 21 or 22 footer on there. I saw that too. All right. Yeah. looks nice. looks nice. But hey, I mean, isn't he in the elites? I mean, if you're going to be fishing the elites, don't you need an elite screen, an elite setup? I don't know about little old me. You know what I mean? I don't know if I need all of that right now. All right. So let's see. Uh, M. Jones says my nine inch screen is just fine for my Garmin. All right. Shout out to M. Jones. See, look, I told you guys. It's a little bit of everybody in here. Lawrence, Garmin, Hummingbird. We're just all one big happy family having a good time in here. All right. So Jim says, especially us older guys who don't see as good as we used to. And Jim said, as hood as I used to. So, yeah. Do you have your glasses on, Jim? <laughs> do you have your glasses on? All right. M. Jones says, you can get a 50-inch TV. <laughs> Oh, come on, M. Jones. Come on, man. <laughs> you said you can get a 50-inch TV and Ethernet that bad boy if your eyes are bad. Man, come on. You can't be rolling down the lake with a 50-inch big screen TV on the boat. Oh, oh, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. All right. All right, guys. Let me just share my screen again real quick. And we'll take a look. And this is just for the guys that may have um, 360 imaging. And we're going to take a look at the question, does size matter? We shall see. What do you guys think? Let's take a look. All right, guys. I am out here on the water, and we have a 12 G4N at the top. And at the bottom, we have a 10-inch G3N unit. Both of these are Hummingbird Helix units. Um, I don't think the, uh, whether it's a G4 or a G3 really matters in what we're talking about today because the, as far as the, uh, pixelation, the quality image that you're getting is going to be about the same on these. But the question that we have is, um, is the size of the screen, does that really matter whenever we're out here on the water and it, and determining what you're seeing on the screen? and what you can see when you're actually looking at the screen. So right now, I just have them both on the 360 imaging, and it's just set at the regular uh, regular screen size. So what we'll do is go ahead and let's just get a little closer look so you guys can see what we're looking at here. So from that distance I was just at, obviously you can see this cluster of rocks here, you can see another cluster of rocks here, and there's a lot of rocks all around this area right here. We are sitting in around six to six and a half feet, something like that out here. And I have the range set at 60 feet. The range rings are set at 15 feet. 
and it's not zoomed in or zoomed out or anything. So that is just the regular size. So that's what we're starting at, guys, just at a base level um, on both of these units. So this one is the same right here. And you can see that same cluster of rocks. You can see another smaller cluster of rocks. And the closer we get, you can actually see those real small pebbles and things like that. And these rocks are a pretty big, uh, pretty nice size because remember, this is set at 60 feet. And so these range rings are 15 feet apart. So this rock right here is about three, what is that, one third of that right there. So that's a, probably about a five foot boulder right there. So that's a pretty significant boulder size. But if you look closer, you can see some smaller ones in here just to give you an idea of the detail. So let's just go back up again. And from this, this is what I'm standing up. This is what it will look like whenever you're standing up. So you can still see the definition on the smaller one, those boulders that I was pointing out. When you look up at the one at the 12, you can see those a little bit better just simply because the screen is bigger. All right, so now let me just show you guys a way that you can kind of compensate for that. If you come down here on this uh, Yeah, tent, let's take a look at this part. And let's just hit this positive button. We're going to zoom in on this. So now when you look at the screens, the 10 is actually bigger than the one on the 12, the image on the 10 now, but that is because you have zoomed in. And when you look at the, the, uh, the quality of the image, it looks about the same. And the, let me see what just happened with my 12. Okay, just has to reset real quick. All right, so whenever you're looking at it like this, I hope that wind isn't too much for you guys. All right, there we go. Just wanted to show you guys that real quick for people that were asking that question about the side different sizes of the units. With the 360, of course, as you saw, you can just zoom in on the screen to kind of help you out with that. All right, so that was the clip that I wanted to show you guys. Let me just drop this down real quick. And I don't know. I don't I don't think we really need to do the uh the call live call in tonight guys i think I, I think you guys are dropping your questions in there pretty good if anybody wants to call in just you know drop a call in but uh, i don't know if we necessarily need that tonight but let's go ahead and pull up this last part oh real quick we need another poll let's just check this poll real quick all right so um we have the poll question are you happy with the image quality and bait tracking with your mega live we had 73 percent that said yes and we had 27 percent that said no but i did not really see anybody say why they were not happy with their image quality and bait tracking in the chat so that means we can't necessarily help you out if we don't know what the issue is all right so now let's uh end this poll and i'm gonna drop let's see we'll do one more poll in here And I guess this will be a, a nice question for the chat since this was about the 1.30 update. So let's start this poll and let's see, did you complete? So if you have Mega Live, obviously, if you have Mega Live, did you complete the update? All right, we will keep it nice and simple. With yes and no. All right, so that poll is up and running. And again, this is just to gauge the room, guys, to see who we have watching this evening. So did you complete the update? And that is the 1.30 update. All right, let's uh, get back over here real quick. So we have that poll running. All right, so now just bear with me as I share my screen one more time. And what we're gonna take a look at real quick is just some of the, some of the pertinent information um, that you may need to know. Some things that I found that were a little different regarding the update this time. All right, so here we go. So this is directly on the Hummingbird website. And of course you go to the support tab, go down to software updates, and let's take a look at the Mega Live first. So if you go down here and you see under accessories and mapping, go down to Mega Live Imaging. All right, and let's see Mega Live Imaging, and we I'm running Helix. So now let's go down here, and what we're going to look for is, of course, we want to see what is this update going to do for us. And when we see in here summary of features slash issues that have been addressed in version 1.30. 
And the only thing that it's stating in here is improved bottom stability compensation performance. This improves mega live and rough water. And while using the trolling motor, I mean, would you do an update for that? Would you do an update for that? I don't know. I mean, if I have a good, if I already have a good, um, image quality, I can track my bait. Everything is looking good. I don't know if that's enough for me. So now let's back back out of that. Go back up to support software updates. And now let's scroll down to the graph themselves. So like I was saying earlier, I'm running a Helix 12. Um, let me see. Helix 12 Chirp Mega SI G4N. That is that unit that I run my Mega Live system on. So let's take a look at that and see what we have here. You have to confirm the serial number range of your unit. So now if you look over here, it is going to say my unit number is my serial unit is greater than or if it's less than. So you need to look up your serial number, guys. And depending on which one you pick, mine was less than. So I will continue to the download from there. And now let's scroll down and take a look and see. Mega Live. Here is the Mega Live section, and these are the things that it will do. There's one, two, five things improve Mega Live and Mega 360 interference rejection, reliability, and performance. So that may help out with our image quality a little bit. And then we have added auto sensitivity and contrast into landscape mode. For any of you guys that are curious about landscape mode, just do a search on YouTube, Money Bass, Mega Live, Landscape. And I have a tutorial that will show you how to set up that landscape mode all right then we also have remove pitch and roll compensation from landscape mode and this is the main one right here for me added several incremental mega live and data display improvements hmm what is that i don't know what that is i called support they didn't necessarily know what that was the engineers i guess did not tell them or the people that were doing the on the water testing did not um, explain to them in detail what that does so i decided to head out today myself to find out so i'll go out a few more times and get some more information for that and of course i'll be reporting back to you guys to let you know what i found out and the last thing is improved bottom stability compensation performance which is the same thing that was listed under the mega live section so that right there and let me just blow that up a little bit i didn't realize it was that small but there we go, guys. So that is what I was looking at right there. So that is and that is pretty much under the um, information for the unit itself. So once you update your graph, these are the things that happen with the graph. So at, like I said, I'll be out here a few more times and see um, what type of results that I get once I spend a little more bit more time on the water with it. And. Every time I go out here, sometimes I try to bring you guys along on the on the water lives. But as soon as I get on there and I'm like, hey, guys, I'm going to check out the screen settings today. Or, hey, I'm out here to test out this piece of equipment. Catch a fish, money bass. We want to see you catching fish. <laughs> so, so I'll probably make a dedicated time slot where I will go out on the on the water live and do, um, you know, just focus on catching fish so you guys can see my process for doing that. But if you really want to see me live and in action catching fish, um, go to actually let me just pull it up real quick and just show you guys. Um, all right, I'm just checking in the chat. I see you guys in there networking together. So really, really appreciate everybody for tuning in. Let me give a few quick shout outs. Have a new member. Shout out to Chris Phillips. Really, really appreciate you supporting the channel and becoming a member of the money team. We also have the Serial Intellectual hitting us up with the $10 Super Chat. And of course, have to give credit to the current sponsor of the live stream, M. Jones, came in said, let me help out with the program. Really, really appreciate that. I'm glad you guys are finding value in the content. So we'll come back each week, every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. And of course, like I said, I do some pop-up live streams every once in a while. So make sure you guys tune in for that. All right, let's see. Let's see. What was the next thing we were going to take a look at? Oh, I wanted to show you guys the, let me drop this down. For you guys that are not familiar with the Battle of the Anglers, Let's just take a look at that real quick. So let's go Money Bass. And all I'm doing is going to YouTube and just doing a search for Money Bass. Battle of the Anglers. All right, here we go. 
All right, just bear with me, guys. I'm going to share my screen so that you can actually see what I'm pulling up for you. All right, there we go. Battle of the Anglers. Let's see if I can zoom in on that a little for you. So now if you take a look, you see these different Battle of the Angler um, programs right here. So this is actually us live on the lake where you actually can watch and see us interacting with, with each other on the lake. So let's just go ahead and play this one real quick. Might have to zoom out on that a little bit. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Hmm. Is it going to play? <laughs> All right. I'm just checking in the chat real quick too, guys. See if anybody had any other questions. Not really seeing any questions in here. He'll be out for a little bit. Oh man. I got a, I got a two minute penalty for, uh, All right. Let me just refresh my screen real quick and see if that would take care of it. There we go. That's what I needed to do. All right. So now as you will see, this is me in the top, what is that top left corner? Then we have four other anglers here. Then we have, who is this over here? Your partner, CT. CT was doing some commentating on this one. And as you see, it looks like I had just caught a fish. Let's just take a look real quick. Let's back up just a little bit so you guys can see. Yeah, so I remember that one. So there we go. Yeah, I caught a fish, guys. So you see it's live on the screen, and we are communicating with each other. So each one of these anglers that you see on the screen, we can all talk to each other, and we can hear each other. And we are also responding and talking to you guys in the chat. So I don't know if I will be on the tournament scene too much this season because I'm going to be um, expanding um, these on-the-water battle of the anglers getting more people involved and, you know, just kind of expanding that. So for me, this format is a lot of fun. And a lot of you guys that watch it, you're having a lot of fun too, because you're actually communicating and participating with the anglers. We're making, we're making bets live on screen against each other. And as you can see, um, you know, it's a lot of fun and we do live way ins right there. So that's what you're watching right here on this um, screen. So I'm weighing the fish live. And then we just release them right back into the lake. So that is a real good deal. All right. So, yeah, just wanted to drop that in there. So if anybody is interested in seeing some live footage, this one right here is Battle of the Anglers. Trash Talk is mandatory. Episode five, Lake Lanier Fall Bass Fishing. So this was a good one. This was a good episode, guys. Not that I'm biased or anything about the results. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so that was, a, that was a fun episode right there, guys. All right. So. We had a good one, guys. We've been running for about an hour and a half, almost an hour and a half. Had some great information. Hopefully, you guys find some found some um, value in tonight's live stream. It was a little, little different from what we've been doing lately as far as talking about all of these hot topics and everything as the tournament season is getting started. But this is one of the main topics that we used to talk about a lot on this channel. And, um, you know, we'll definitely get back into it a little bit. So I have some more footage that I'll be putting out for you guys. All right. All right, guys. Really, really appreciate it. So I will once again, you know, this one went a little over an hour. So I may split this up and drop a little extra content in the members only section, guys. So really, really appreciate the members of the money team and also have to give a big shout out to M. Jones, another member of the money team and also this sponsor the sponsor for tonight's live stream all right guys i hope you have enjoyed the content i hope you found some value in the information that was presented tonight all right guys let's head on out i will see you on the next